Hey there everybody, Groovy here coming at you from the Grindhouse and today we're going to do a quick little review of Day Shift, the new movie which you can watch on Netflix, which stars Jamie Foxx, no relation, and Dave Franco. Now this movie is brought to us by first time director J.J. Perry and he was a stunt coordinator on things like the John Wick franchise and you can definitely tell that this movie is an action comedy horror with more of an emphasis really on action and comedy than horror, unfortunately. Because this movie tells the story of Bud Jablonski, who was a hardworking single dad living in LA, operating a pool cleaning business. But that business is really a cover for his true source of primary income, which is hunting and killing vampires. Now, right from the beginning, you get a good feel from what to expect from this movie because we get a long, sort of drawn out fight sequence with Bud and this elderly female vampire. And there is some great bone crunching action in this. Like, I was watching this and I was like, man, this is a really prolonged fight scene to really start the movie with. I don't know if it was setting the tone, which it totally was, or whether there was some Sam Raimi shit going on and the people making this film really just wanted to torment their actors like some of the action in this opening scene really did kind of borderline on being mean-spirited it kind of almost gave me a little bit of a vibe of something like drag me to hell right and I did really enjoy that and while overall I didn't think that this was a very enjoyable movie it is definitely a movie from somebody that's more comfortable with action than character building or really horror because the horror elements of this are just a kind of plot device, right? He just so happens to be going up against vampires. We don't get a lot of classic vampire horror scenes in this movie, right? There's not a lot of scenes of them drinking people's blood or biting people on the neck. It's usually just there to kind of add to some superhuman kind of action and, and like I said, those extended fight sequences. And the fight sequences and some of the action sequences with gunplay are really solid in this movie but unfortunately because that seems to be the primary focus that there is much less of a focus on character development and it is kind of a shame that this movie isn't really interested with developing bud as a character and fleshing him out because there are supporting characters like the relationship that he has with his ex-wife jocelyn played by megan good and apparently the movie doesn't really care about exploring what caused the rift between them just kind of throwing the explanation out there well bud you always seemed like you were hiding something from me and i just couldn't live with that i mean Bud, how many years were you with this girl? At that point, you should probably let her know how you making that bread, right? But the movie does give a little bit more time to developing his relationship with his daughter Paige, played by Zion Broadmax, but that's really only because Jocelyn and Paige are going to factor in to the ending of the movie when they inevitably get captured by the vampires and get put in the path of mortal peril. Another character that doesn't seem like it was really fleshed out enough, which really could have helped the movie, was his relationship with Seth, who is kind of his buddy character. Seth being played by Dave Franco is kind of this nebbish, kind of accountant type character who is assigned with Bud so he can be supervised by the Vampire Hunters Union to make sure that he doesn't break any of their bylaws, which is really a ploy by their boss, Seeger, to make sure that Bud gets fired. And that's also another character that I like to point out, that Seeger is played by Eric Lang, who did a fan-fucking-tastic job in Brand New Cherry Flavor. He's just one of those characters that you love to hate, especially if you put him in a weird wig, and I would have loved to see more of him in this movie, but I guess we didn't really need that from him. But they definitely could have used some more time to really kind of develop the relationship between Bud and Dave Franco's character Seth, as I said, because it just kind of seems like Seth's just there to tag along and then piss his pants a couple of times because he's such a coward and let you know that that's the character there that just makes Bud look even stronger and more capable, right? And if they really kind of wanted to dive into that, you know, they could have done something with those characters, but they had such little concern for developing the characters in this movie that Seth doesn't even get a last name. Because this movie's more focused with the action, it doesn't even really get around to doing a lot of the world building. Because there is this overarching plot which is kind of underbaked with this female vampire 
Audrey, played by Carla Souza, who wants revenge on Bud for killing one of her family members who she turned into a vampire at the beginning of the movie. And Bud doesn't really know this until the very end of the movie, so there isn't that much tension between the two. As I said, this movie isn't really interested in building a world for these vampires to operate in, which it could have definitely done and made this movie a lot more interesting, right? Like, they even talk about five different casts of vampires, like Eastern vampires, Western vampires, spider vampires, uber vampires, and juvenile vampires, I believe it is, and that they all are kind of splintered, that they don't really associate with each other. But now that Audrey is coming in and bringing them all under one banner with the promise of giving them vampire sunblock so they can go out in the day for like 15 minutes at a time, that becomes like the driving force for everything that they're working against in the course of the movie. As I said, because this movie is not interested in exploring anything with that or developing anything with that, it really almost kind of just becomes like a slice of life kind of movie, following Bud over like two or three days in his vampire hunting career. And there are some other half-baked ideas in this movie as well, ideas like thralls or familiars and stuff like that, which are just humans that want to be vampires, so they serve them. And this movie doesn't really do much with that. And while Jamie Foxx and Dave Franco all given good performances in this movie, I did really enjoy watching it. Because of the fact that there isn't a lot of depth to it, it does really all come off as really shallow. I did really like some of those bone-crunching action sequences, but when I watch a movie like this, I wanted a little bit more of a mix of the different elements that they're trying to bring in from the different genres, right? We could have had a little bit more with this vampire hierarchy, we could have had a little bit more with this vampire hunting union that they were a part of, but all in all, because they don't explore any of that, it just comes off as mostly fluff and really what is kind of a vanity piece for Jamie Foxx, right? And I do love Jamie Foxx, don't get me wrong, this movie was fun, so was that Project Power movie that he was also in, which you can also watch on Netflix. <laughs> and again, seeing him in Spider-Man No Way Home again as Electro, always fantastic, he had some great lines in that, but I don't know. Something about this movie here just seems like it was just a shallow action movie with some comedy elements and maybe some light horror tones as well. When I got done watching this movie, I asked myself the question, why aren't there more action, buddy comedy, horror films, right? Sometimes they work out really well and sometimes, you know, you do have some buddy comedy for comedic relief in some other horror films, but I don't think like any of it ever really meshes 100%. I think it's probably because you really need to be 100% on point, even to do a comedy horror, you don't always get what you want out of it, right? You know, there's always Shaun of the Dead, which is that high mark. There's always other movies where they just try to throw in elements of comedic relief just to lighten the tension, but it doesn't really hit. Either that or the balance isn't there. The only other movie that I can think of that kind of falls into that vein off the top of my head would be Dead Heat, starring Treat Williams and Joe Piscopo. And while I did really enjoy watching The Day Shift, as I said, it does have some really solid action, some really good bone crunching splatter effects in it as well. I found myself sitting there saying, yo man, where can I go watch Dead Heat online? <laughs> and then that's what I went and did. I immediately followed that up with this. And I would say, watch those two movies together. Definitely a good double feature. I do think the Dead Heat is a little bit better. It has a little bit more of the horror elements, a little bit more of that classic 80s kind of action movie, kind of a little bit of comedic Miami Vice with some horror elements into it. But this movie just didn't really seem to have a good blend of everything, you know? Just something about it just seemed off, didn't quite have that balance. But all in all, if you do like vampire movies, if you do like Jamie Foxx, if you do like just solid action movies, I would say definitely check this movie out. It's definitely worth a viewing. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure to drop a like on this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time to talk about more movies. Stay safe, everybody. Stay classy, but no matter what you do. Make sure that you stay groovy, people. We outie. Bye-bye.
Harry's just tried to kill me. Now I just pissed my favorite fucking Hey, hey, hey everybody pisses himself the first time. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, did yeah. you? No, I, no, no, I didn't, but, but listen, you did.